Okay, hello everyone. This is the Mad Artist, and uh, with me I have Roger Rabbit. Hey yo. Yeah. Uh, no candy gaming. Uh, today. Um, I don't know if he's gonna come on later, but uh, if, if it does, we'll let him in. So I've been drinking lots of water. I don't know why. Gotta hydrate. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we haven't uh, done one of these in, like, last time I checked, two weeks. Uh, well, well, for the first week, it was because I had that Stellaris MP with uh, boys at, at Nick D4 VIS. And, and the second week was because of scheduling conflicts. I... I think you said that you couldn't come last week, Roger. Yeah, I, I wasn't able to make it. Yeah, and uh, nobody else um, texted back if they could uh, do one that week, so we just didn't have it. But hopefully, uh, we can start to get back into the swing of things. Yeah. So for uh, this podcast, we're going to be... For, for right now, I'll talk about uh, Fire Night Falcon and uh, how big of a success that came to be in like a couple months. Yeah, dude, it, it became like wildly popular. It's like one of those games that just comes out and just instantly everyone, it just becomes instantly popular. Yeah, um, I uh, think I first learned about it. Once I saw the um, videos of it appearing, oh yeah, I first learned about it when I, uh, this YouTuber I watch, uh, Asai, who does like clone hero stuff on YouTube. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I saw him do a video about it, and I was curious because I I never learned about this. Video, but uh, when I watched it, I was like, wow, this is a uh, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I didn't first find out about it until memes started showing up on my, um, on my YouTube recommendations. I'm like, Friday Night Funkin'. I'm like, what's that? And then I clicked it and I saw the memes and then I searched up what the game was. And yeah, it seemed, it, it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. So, uh, for those that may not, oh, sorry. I was gonna say, I haven't played it, but, um, I've played those types of games where it's like you, you hit the arrows on a specific time. Uh, basically rhythm games. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't played a rhythm games in like fucking years. The, like the last one I remember playing was like Rock Band with my sister. Like. Oh yeah, Rock Band was fun. Yeah, from like way, way back in the day. No, the last rhythm game I think I ever played was like Rhythm Heaven Fever or uh, something like that. Yeah. I uh, mostly remember the games for like games like Parappa the Rapper. Oh yeah, Parappa the Rapper is great. Yeah, that uh, it was funny because I think that was also I think that was one of the main inspirations for uh, Friday Night Funkin' if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Like if uh, if any of you have played uh, those two games, uh, Parappa the Rapper, and I think um, Jammer Lammy was the other one. I think so. I, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't seen much of that in a while, while, so. But yeah, if uh, yeah. you pl played those two and played Fire Night Funkin', you can definitely tell there's like some similarities along with uh, other um, games. I don't quite know. Yeah, I think um, another reason why it became so widely popular really quickly is because of the nostalgia of it. It has that flash look to it like the new grounds like flash games look to it that oh, yeah. kind of brings a bit of nostalgia oh yeah it definitely has that sort of like old school new grounds and it actually kind of brought new grounds from its little bit of irrelevancy because yeah i, I used to frequent new grounds quite a bit back then yeah me too yeah, it, like it, like you could find like some pretty damn good shit in new grounds. Like it was, like there was, there was a lot of memorable stuff over there. You, even the shitty stuff was still quite yeah. memorable. Yeah, but like just like flash games in general, like 
just that was a big, big part of my childhood growing up like going to the school computers just to play them oh yeah uh i also do the same thing as well and also i think also why it's kind of become popular is because you know as we all know adobe flash died oh yeah it, it, uh, flash is kill um i think start of last year was it yeah, last year, like like just the last day of last year. Yeah. And I guess it was sort of like already we were pretty nostalgic for it. Like unless unless you got the sites that managed to save uh the flash games before like that completely killed them. Yeah. Yeah, you couldn't really play any more flash games, so like basically the, the for over a decade that whole era of game we just stopped yeah it, it truly was the end of an era yeah and then like with all the shit that happened in 2020 uh, I, I guess it was kind of cool that the Friday Night Funkin came to be like like how it just exploded the popularity just out of the fucking blue like that yeah because a lot, a lot of shit went down in 2020, and I guess this is just, like, one of the things to get people with minds off of that. For, like, the whole yep. nostalgic purposes, reminiscing on, like, shit from Newgrounds. I mean, you, you got fucking Tank Man in this game recently. Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> like if, that, if that doesn't show off the whole Newground influence, I don't know what does. Yeah. Um, well, also, I think another reason why this game is extremely popular is because... It is so easily moddable. They literally give you the source code for the game, so you can literally just make whatever the heck you want if, oh, if yeah. you're if you're good at it. Like, I'm pretty sure they, re they released it like once the game was made on the was made to be downloaded, basically, so that way they can be like, hey, just do whatever the fuck you want with this. Yeah, and that's what makes it so good. So you can literally just create whatever you want, add in whatever song, whatever character you want to put in there. Like, um, one of my favorites is the Nostalgia Critic versus the Angry Video Game Nerd. That one is so great. Oh, yeah. One of my favorites uh, mod is, like, the currently the Neo mod, which is, like, uh, the remix. A song to oh, be yeah. more, like, more, like, futuristic... There's a whole whole like design thing that looks like graffiti. I really like the uh, the look of it. Yeah. Um. Also, what was it gonna? In other video gaming news, um, Super Mario Party just finally added online multiplayer. Finally, God after did... two years. <laughs> How? <laughs> it, uh, I I just got reminded of Fallout seventy six when they added push to talk. Months like towards the end of the year, after like months, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, how the fuck do you not add push to talk? A system that know. has been in games for like over a decade at that point. <laughs> yeah, I have no clue, but like, okay, because before they had online, but it was only just to play like five. Five to ten mini games against like other people online, and that was it. Now they finally added like multiplayer online, but like it's already way past due. Like that game was released two years ago, and like yeah, there was no updates for the game until just now. So there was no, and also it it doesn't have much replayability because it's only four boards. I think that's the lowest count for any Mario Party game as. If I remember correctly. Uh, which not, one has not... the highest? Or actually, actually, no, it's not the lowest. Um, The lowest would be Mario Party to the top 100. That was the 3DS game where it's just 100 mini games. It only had one board. Oh, well, well it's a 3DS, so. Yeah. It, it, it's, uh, it's it's more, been more understandable because it, it it's no console or PC. Yeah, I know, but, um, I mean, they had Mario Party Island Tour. Okay, that wasn't a good game. Um, <laughs> I think the at the best of the Mario Party 3DS games is easily Star Rush. It's surprisingly decent. It's okay. It's, it's way, it's really different, but, like, it's a okay different. Yeah. 
Uh, we need to stop playing some of those games one of these days. Yeah, and uh, oh, what were you gonna say? Uh, you were gonna say something before I did so. Oh uh, well, um, I was just saying like, yeah, man. After Hudson left, Mario Party just really went off the rails. It it fell off a cliff. It went down astronomically. Yeah, after they at like their last game was um, Mario Party DS. And once they left that, then, um, I forgot what, uh, company is working on it. It was, like, NDQ, not NDQ, but, or maybe it was. I don't know what company. But then there was another company that joined in who previously worked on Wii Party. And they made, um, Mario Party 9. And we all know how their shit that was. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh... Get back to uh, Friday Funkin' for a bit. Another mod that uh, I really like. <clears throat> Sorry. Another mod I like for uh, that is um. Uh, oh yeah, the Star Catcher mod. It is a lot more sci-fi space kind of mod. Yeah. The songs there are pretty damn good. Usually so myself. And then uh, oh yeah. There's another mod that uh, I'm interested in, <laughs> in doing a video for at least um, the versus Matt the Wii. <laughs> oh yeah, Matt, aka the strongest me character ever. <laughs> yeah, Matt. Uh, I, every sport, every sports game, man. There's a Matt. You don't mess with Matt. Yeah, I can. I fucking love Matt. Uh. Uh, yep. Like, I, I just like how he's supposed to be like this, like utterly overpowered character in, in the mod. That like, is pretty. Yep. Cool. It's, it's pretty funny as well. He was the Mike Tyson of this game. Yeah, yeah he is the Mike Tyson. He's the Mike Tyson of rapping. Well, it's yeah. not really it's not really rapping because they don't they don't say anything unless he kind of left the lemon demon as I call him I don't call him monster because monster is boring I call him lemon demon <laughs> yeah besides the lemon demon who doesn't rap or sings they they don't they don't really say yeah. so no. um do you know who made Friday Night Funkin or no um I think no, I was thinking of the producer, that being Kawhi Sprite, who does the vocals of like most characters, and also a boyfriend. Yeah, because I was gonna say like it's only like four people who worked on this game. Yeah, I think. Yeah. And you know it's it's so great to see like these little games made by like a small group and they make it like really big. Like yeah, um. It like Toby Fox and Undertale. Oh um, yeah, I, I was about Cawthon to say that. <laughs> Scott Cawthon with Friday Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, it, it's it, it's pretty crazy how like these very small games can just explode with so much popularity. Like F F Friday Nights at Freddy's, like that was like the first game was supposed to be Scott Cawthon's like last game if it didn't uh, succeed. But it did succeed. Yeah, like it it, it is. It's crazy to think that he would have just straight up quit uh, game development if Five Nights at Freddy's had failed. Because, yeah. <laughs> because now he's got like this whole he's big like universe, this franchise, there's a movie that's still in the works. Oh yeah, there was still a movie. There is still a movie in the works. I don't. I yeah. haven't heard yeah. anything about it. Yeah, I, I. If I'm correctly, Scott threw out the script and replaced it because uh, he didn't like how it was. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that Let's happened. See. Um, I mean, yeah. So speaking of video game movies, um, did you hear that um, Sonic the Hedgehog two is still currently in production? Oh yeah, I uh forgot. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, um, they're my... working on it, and there's actually leaks online. yeah, um, there are actually leaks online of Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles all together. Ooh. 
So yeah, Knuckles is in the film. Ooh. If they make a third Ooh. film, it, it should have and Knuckles at the end of the title. Yeah. Where, where's that damn fourth Chaos Emerald? <laughs> well, um, it, it only showed Shadow. I don't know if they're ever going to bring Shadow into the thing. They haven't They haven't shown Amy either, so I don't know if she's going to be in it. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Fucking... God, God damn it, Shadow. Like, like, I don't know. I, I love and hate the character. I love him because of how edgy he is, and I hate him because of how edgy he is. <laughs> yeah, he's a very divisive character. You either love him or you think he's just like a meme, and that's it. Yeah, I. I well, I love him because he's, a meme. he's edgy the hedgy. Yes, I, I, I also love him because of that. <laughs> Like, I, I still remember the time when I was a kid and I thought uh the Sonic the the not the Sonic the Shadow the Hedgehog game was good. Yep. Oh boy, I remember those days. Oh no. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah, looking back at it now, I I don't know why I thought it was good. I don't know. Have you actually beaten Shadow the Hedgehog? Have you gone to the final story I th- or whatever? I think I beat it once. But I, I think I only got Fuck, what ending did I get? Um, I think I got the ending where Shadow kills Eggman. Oh my god. Oh yeah, that one. That's the, um, I forgot which one that is, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got that ending. But I don't know if I got any other endings. Yeah, because, um, there are ten endings total, and if you get, if you get all ten endings, you get the final story, which makes all the other 10 endings redundant because it's like wh- what What was the point of making me complete this game 10 times if you're just going to give me a final story that shows me the true ending anyway I, I, I guess it's also you can see all of them or like for completionist sake or the pad it out I don't know but like that sucks that means because like you can at least after you beat the first level you can branch out into whatever you want but if you you have to beat the game 10 times, which means you have to go through Westopolis, which is the first stage, 10 times in a row. Oh, yeah. And then uh, you have to make sure that you choose the right endings, which involves doing fucking weird shit that I don't remember. I know yeah, it's, it fucking sucked. The, the hero... Yeah, the hero mission, the neutral mission, or the, the evil mission. Yeah, the but neut- when you get to the very end, you have to choose between hero or evil. Yeah. Uh, the neutral involves just getting all the chaos emeralds, so just being the stage. Yeah, only. so that, yeah, I think that's the one everyone goes for because it's just the easiest and most straightforward of all them. It's the one that feels like an actual Sonic game, where it's just getting to the end. Yeah, the um, the hero basically be a good guy, save people, um, kill the aliens. I think. Fuck. Yeah, the the villain Black Doom. Yeah, it's, it's been so long since I've since I've seen or played through Shadow the Hedgehog. Like fucking trying to remember. It no, I just head. remember. I I have I have never played the game, but I have seen playthroughs of it, and I yeah, I don't want to play it. <laughs> yeah, I played through the shit out of that when I was a kid because I thought it was good. No, I played through uh, Sonic Heroes, and uh, yeah, I just went back to playing Mario Sunshine after playing Sonic Heroes. <laughs> yeah. Bro, <laughs> fucking... Uh... Sonic Heroes, they expect you to beat the game four times with uh, four different teams. There's Team Sonic, Team Dark, Team Amy, and Team Chaotix. I mean... And, um... I mean, if there's, like, some variety, and they're interesting to play as, I guess that could work. No, but, like, all three teams play exactly the same. I mean, yeah. all four teams play exactly the same. And um, Yeah, yeah, that's so, the thing. <laughs> yeah, so to basically put it, um, Team Amy is easy mode. Team Sonic is normal mode. Team Dark is um, hard mode. And Team Chaotix is scavenger mode. So, like, Team Rose is the easiest. That's the one I recommend going for the Chaos Emeralds of 4. Um, Sonic is the normal mode. He's there fine. Team... I don't know why it's called Team Dark. Honestly, if it was called Team Shadow, it would be better. But um, 
yeah, that's the one where it, it's just hard difficulty. They add more enemies and stuff. Team Chaotix is the worst one. Because instead of having to beat the level normally, like, from beginning to end, you have to spend your time, like, searching for, like, stuff. Like, every level, it's, like, a different thing. Like, I forget, I think, like, the second or third mission, they make you search for, like, 80... I don't know what it was, but it was, like, 80 things in a level. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. Oh, my God. Yeah, we call those collect-a-thons. Yeah. And, like, like, if you're a good game, you could do it. But if you're a shit game, you can't. <laughs> yeah, like, collectathons are really good if they're structured properly. Like, I love Banjo-Kazooie. Oh, yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah, the guy added to Smash. Yeah, he got added to Smash. And the everyone only lost their shit, I think. I, I wanted. Yeah, he was the only character I wanted in Smash. And so oh, yeah. when I remember I saw that, and I, um, I legit cried watching it. Oh, yeah, and they add Sans. Undertale. Well, technically, he's not a character. He's just a Mii Gunner costume, but yeah. 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 I, I like how it's just called Sans Undertale and not Sans the Skeleton. <laughs> like, his, like the, yeah. his last Undertale name just became Undertale not... out of the fucking blue. <laughs> I find so that... does he own Undertale? Because it's named after him. I mean, he was created by Toby Fox, so I, I guess, technically. Yeah. Yeah, Toby uh, Fox is the dog. Uh, oh, yeah. That's like his uh, avatar, basically. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. Uh, remember when Game Theory gave the Pope Undertale? Uh, yeah. Uh, he ain't gonna live that one down. <laughs> you, know, you remember when Game Theory said that Ness is Sans? Remember when Game Theory actually gave a shit? <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. Every... Yeah, I think that was the biggest meme to come out of uh, Game Theory was the ne Nessa Sands meme. Oh yeah, she got shot on so hard. So hard, in fact, that Toby Fox, I think, outright denied it. Yep. And, um, yeah, I'm just gonna wait to see what other meme he's gonna come up with. Like, saying one char character is another character. I'm waiting. Um, oh yeah, I remember there was a meme going on, I think, on a subreddit. Uh, Friday Night Funkin', and it was to get Matt Pack to do a lore theory on Friday Night Funkin', in a style similar to FNAF. Oh my god. Like a super yeah. serious, like, dark twist. Uh, uh you know, just dr drag it out for like five fucking years. <laughs> exactly. Like... Yeah, like FNAF has also become a, uh, game theory meme. Yes, and because of uh, how many videos he's done and how long it's been going on for. Yeah, and I think uh, that's that's part of the joke. They want to do something similar with Friday Night uh, Friday Night Funkin'. Yeah, I mean, because they're both called they they it's 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 a uh, it's because it's they both involve knights. Yeah, you have FNAF and they got Funf. Oh, speaking of uh, knights, you know that game Knights by Sega, which was like the knights, the flying thing. Helping the two depressed kids and like doing stuff. It's like a weird, obscure Sega game. Fuck. I don't know. I, I remember Odd World. That kind of yeah. game. Like, not too long ago, I think. Yeah, Knights is the, uh, it's the weird game. It was for the Sega Saturn. And um, they they go into night. It's about these two kids who go to Nightopia and they find knights. This weird um, flying character with like a purple pointy hat, like two horns. Yeah, I, I don't. Because <laughs> it's okay if you don't remember, but um, I don't know if you've heard, but there was a new game that came out from Square Enix, uh, um, by uh, Yuji Naka, the guy who created Sonic, he's a Sonic guy. And oh. then, um, the guy who, um, made the design for Sonic, I forgot his name. They both joined together at Square Enix and made a game called Balan Wonderworld. What? I don't know if you've heard of it. What? Have you heard of Balan Wonderworld? It just came out recently. 
No, I've never heard of it. Oh my god, it is... It is the... I don't know how to describe it. It's like the mighty number 9 of of 2020 so far. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, well, it wasn't, it wasn't I, I a Kickstarter. I completely forgot about mighty number 9. Oh, the fucking yeah. trailer. Just, well, I just got flashed on that damn trailer. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Cry like an anime fan. Oh. <laughs> yeah. God. I still can't believe that was a fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, in all seriousness, um, it, while the game wasn't a Kickstarter, it was uh, Yuji Naka. He went to Square Enix and they gave him one chance to make a 3D platformer game. And they wanted a lot of story, but Yuji Naka is not good with a lot of story in his games. He wants them as simple as possible. But he well, then made hire one. A story person. Yeah. But he didn't. He wrote it himself. Of he course. wrote an entire like 280 page book that you can buy right now. That's that because oh. the video game doesn't explain shit. All right. Oh, it's one of those, like the, it's one of those where you have to read the source material in order to understand what's going on. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. There was a book released the same day as the video game, and the book basically explains just about everything. So the book is one giant exposition yep. piece. I see. Uh, yeah, basically, and it's like, why didn't you put this story in the? Why didn't you put these? details in the game so we would know what the fuck we're doing no like why not hire a guy who's good at writing stories i don't know um i didn't buy the book i just saw the reviews and playthroughs of it online and yeah it is it is like they charged 60 dollars for this game all right i want you to search up bell and wonderworld because it is baffling to me just what i don't know what went wrong i don't know if it was the pandemic but jesus christ it was wow yeah yeah the that uh, doesn't that <laughs> uh, 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 oh 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 <laughs> did, did you get your bell in wonder world yep six out of ten on steam 35% on Metacritic, and 4 out of 10 on IGN. With you only 15% of funny, people um, liking this. <laughs> yeah, exactly, my dude. Um, oh my what, what, what score did it get? Uh, for uh, which? Is uh, IGN. Not Steam, uh, the other two. Uh, uh, Metacritic gave it 35%, and IGN gave it a 4 out of 10. No. Well, okay, so Metacritic gave it a 35. Let me see. Yeah. Let me let me search this up. Battle and Wonder World Metacritic. Um like like it's not yeah, like it got it. Fallout 76. Which I I think has like at the time it had like some of the lowest scores ever. Yep. Ugh, man. Well, no, but sw- you know what that means, right? Let me let me see this right now. Give me a second. Let me search this up. I'll if provide- it has a thirty a thirty five critic, right? Yeah. I searched up the Sonic O six score. Sonic O six has a forty six from Metacritic. That means that Battle and Wonderworld is worse rated than Sonic 06. Well, to be honest, I think I think it's rated higher because of uh, the memes. Yeah, and also because at least, you know, Sonic 06, it's a shitty game, but at least it's somewhat fun to play because of how shitty it is. Yeah, Battle like, and Wonderworld, like, I don't like, know if you watch gameplay of it, it is yeah. so boring. Yeah, Sonic, I think why that's high because it's fun in how shit it is. Like, yeah. Like, like, you can be entertained 
by how bad Sonic 06 is. But yeah. what I what I've been seeing, uh, Battle in Wonderworld is uh, not only not good, it's boring as well, and that's a combination that that that's very very bad. <laughs> yeah. So if you look at it, I don't know if you're looking at Battle in Wonderworld. Um. Because I love the design of the characters. I love Balan's design. He looks really cool. Like a white top hat with the yeah. eyes. And then like he has this yeah, really cool... Yeah, that's kind of cool. Cause... Yeah, because this was... um I forgot his name, but like... He was the guy who designed Sonic the Hedgehog. And he has a really good... um He does a lot of good character design. And he, he did... um All the characters have a, a Billy Hatcher vibe to them. Um, and yeah, I just... Man, it, it's such a shame because like you can you can tell that they wanted to make a good game, but like there were so many baffling decisions. Yeah, like, like one of the dumbest things about this game is the fact that every button is every button does the same action. Like the what? A button, the X, what? Y, the B, they all do either jump or an attack. What the fuck? And it even applies to the menus. You can't go back in the menu. You have to select go back. You can't just hit B or like go back. Wow. It, it's what, so what, dumb. What is this? Like the fucking 90s? Like yeah, because... Like one combination? Yeah, because I think they're just... Obs I think Yuji Naka is obsessed with like one button. But like there's a difference between being simple and being brain dead. Like Kirby is simple... But it's not brain dead, you know? Yes. It's not like you can just put a, a, a literal potato in front of them and they'll be able to beat it. <laughs> uh, yeah. This, this... No, but... You, you, um, so the main gimmick of this game is that you have... You get costumes. So, like, there's, like, these enemies and you get, like... You get a costume. There are, like, 80 total costumes in the game. There's 80 of them. And so you're probably thinking to yourself, how are they going to put so many without, you know, most of them just repeating themselves? Well, the answer is uh, they don't. Most of them, re most of them repeat themselves. Oh, so it's literally just cosmetic. The what? Why not make them cosmetics then? I don't know. But the fact that everything is mapped to one button means that you like. It, for example, there's a um, because there's different costumes that do different things. So you have the, I forgot what its name is, like Tornado Wolf. It does a tornado and it jumps. So every time you hit the the action button, it um, jumps and does a spin. But there are some characters that don't jump. Like, there is, um, I forgot what, what your name it is. It's like a squid that shoots like pain or something. But the thing is, since every button does the same thing, all you can do is shoot and you can't jump. You can't jump in a platforming game. G Goddamn, like... Fucking... Wasn't there another game kind of like this? Oh, oh, yeah, I had time. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Dude. Yeah, it, it's like it's trying to be like a 3D open platformer. If I were you, go play something else. Play Mario Odyssey. Play Hat in Time. Play... Yeah. Hell, play Ukulele. I don't give a shit. It's <laughs> like anything else but this game. Yeah, you're bound to have a lot more enjoyment with those than for what I've seen of this. Like, I haven't even heard about this, and already it d doesn't really look that appealing. Yeah. Well, I mean, the gameplay doesn't look appealing, but the cutscenes, though. I think that's where they spend most of their budget, because the cutscenes are amazing. Like, the cutscenes and the graphics, like, for the cutscene, the graphics for the cutscenes are amazing. But when you see the actual gameplay, like, it is such a complete, like, tonal whiplash. It's, like, such a shift from, like, really good, and then it's just, like, I don't know, mobile phone levels of of just bland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, doesn't look, it looked like it got fucked from the start. Yeah. Well, actually, there was a demo that came out for this game. And people hated it, and people told them, like, delay the game, but they didn't delay the game. And in fact, they're actually going to take down the demo. Wow. We got wow. another Sonic 06 situation on our hands, where uh, they take down the demo. 
Oh, yeah, so the only way you can experience it for yourself is to buy the full game. Yeah. Well, unlike Sonic 06, where the demo was actually better than the fin finished game, I think the demo was actually worse than the finished game. But, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that. Yeah, that just looks fucked from the start. Yeah, because the game, the walking speed is so goddamn slow. Like, they increased it a bit in the final game, but it's still slow. And also, there was a day one patch for this game because the final boss has flashing lights. Which could probably, which could... Oh yeah, people... you could trigger seizures with that. Yeah, so they had to, they gave you a day one patch to patch that out. Wow. <laughs> and dude, the Switch version is so much worse. Dude, I don't know what happened, but the Switch version is even, looks even worse. Like, the graphics look way worse on Switch. I mean, it is not powerful hardware, but... Like there are some Switch games that look that still look pretty decent. Yeah, but no, like it 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 it, it took a it it, it took a dive. It it really did. And you know what? It's it's such a shame that this game did bad because I don't think after this game I don't think Yuji Naka is gonna get any more work in the industry. Yeah, unless somebody else hires him. But yeah, like like I, I don't know who would hire him after like seeing this. Yeah, and it, it's so weird that, like, you see Balan, right? He looks cool, right? And you think, oh, it's called Balan Wonderworld, so I'm gonna play him, right? No, you play these, you, you, at the beginning, you choose either a boy named, uh, I forgot, I forgot the names of the characters. I think the girl is Emma and the boy is Leo, and you choose <sighs> one or the other. It's just a boy or girl, and um, those are the characters you play as. And they're not that fun to play. So it's basically... It's like if Yuji Naka looked at the Wii Knights game and said... And looked at the human sections of that, of that game and said... Hey, let's make a whole game around that. But those were the worst parts of the game. So I don't... <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, this looks like about the baffling decision making. Yeah. From like... I get it from like all sides, kind of. Yeah. From, like, the top and um. Wait, what are you gonna say? Oh, from like the top down. Seems like that's where. <laughs> yeah. Fun. No, and not only that, but there's an official Bell and Wonderworld Twitter account that actually explains the mechanics of the game better than the actual game itself. What the fuck? <laughs> what? Yeah, on the Twitter account, if if you go, there is an official Bell and Wonderworld <laughs> Twitter. Good. Uh, I don't use Twitter ever. So, no, I don't either. I, I, I just, uh, I just found out about this by like just searching up images on Google. Um, and um, also, um, this game is on PS Five, so I guess if you want to play it there, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's not much. Yeah, imagine it, getting a PS Five to play Balan and Wonderworld. Yeah. Oh boy, I'm gonna have such a great total time. Yeah. Yeah. It turns out you won't. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Like, it, 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 I mean, I don't, I really don't know what went wrong. Like, I'm sure there's probably videos on YouTube explaining the development behind this game. Oh, yeah. Like, behind the scenes stuff. Like, yeah. Like, independent YouTubers. Yeah, I've seen those videos. Yeah. And, yeah, it just, I, I really, yeah, don't, don't get the game. Just don't. There is a guy who does speedruns of this game, and he makes the game almost look fun. Because what's funny is that there's so much of this game you can skip just by... Because I don't know what they did, but, like, they didn't just... They just... You can jump over a lot of shit. Like, there's one, um... There's one oh, costume there's, called there's, the... There's not enough invisible walls, I take it. Or, like... Well, I mean, not... I'm not invisible walls, but, like, you can literally just walk around because there's enough terrain that you could just kind of, like, walk. And there's also, like, certain power-ups that just break the game. Like, there's one called the Frost Fairy that allows you to do, like, ten mini-jumps and each goes and each goes up. And if you just spam it, you could stay in the air for a while. And, like, yeah, you can... It, it's, it, it's fun when you break the game, but when you're just playing it normally, it sucks. Yeah. So I'm uh, out, well, I'm out with some videos uh, that just so I can see. 
Also, by the way, yeah. uh, Square Enix still waiting for um, Final Fantasy VII Part Two. I don't know when it's coming. It's, it's coming yeah. someday. Yeah. I'm waiting to see Sep to see that one scene with Sephiroth killing um Mario. Fucking... But <laughs> Sephiroth uh... killing Mario, like in the in the Sephiroth reveal trailer for Smash. Oh yeah. I, I forgot about that, and I saw that like not too long ago. <laughs> Sephiroth killing Mario. I, I don't know why I forgot about that already. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm still waiting for part two of that. So, uh, yes, yeah, so they made an entire like separate, not separate company, but they made like a little mini thing called the Balan Company. And this is gonna probably be their first and only game because uh, it's not doing well. Like yeah. it only sold, it sold less than two thousand copies in Japan, and like it, it did oh. really bad. Oh, yeah, and like there is like no advertising for this game, like uh, at all. Yeah, I mean that would explain why I never heard about it until now. <laughs> yeah, and um. You know what's so funny is that the game, the whole premise of the game is that Balan is trying to, like, cheer people up. Like, that's what the game is about, is because, like, these characters, they're all, like, depressed or sad or whatever. And the whole game is about cheering them up, but all this game did was just made people angry. And just... Yeah, yeah so it did the opposite, like many things in life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, speaking of, um... Uh, video game movies. I still, I know, um, I still think the Mario movies in production by Illumination. I think it's still in production. Oh, oh yeah, I think yeah. I've heard about it somewhere. Yeah, it's gonna be made by Illumination, the people who brought you Minions. Ugh. Yeah, and they won't fucking stop shoving it down your throat because yep. they made one good movie. And decided to not let go of that said movie. Yes, exactly. So I don't. Yeah, but um, yeah. Currently, the Mario movie's still in production. Um, there hasn't been any footage or anything said about the plot. There, ha there not really much is well known about the film. Uh, the only, I guess, known thing about it is that um, let me see if I can find it. Um. Um, the only thing I know, let me see if I can find it, is that there are rumors that Mario might, or, uh, let me see, um, so far currently, um, Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario, he, uh, Illumination hasn't approached him if he wanted to voice Mario or not. Really? I mean... So... Why, why, why the fuck not? <laughs> like... I don't know why it's so weird. So this leads me to, like... This... I don't know. This leads me to one of two theories. So either... A, they're not gonna have Mario talk, and they're just gonna reuse Charles Marnet voice clips from the games. Or... Which would be really disappointing. <laughs> yeah, but it'd still be Mario, at least. Or B... They're gonna get a new voice actor from Mario, which I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I I don't have high hopes for that because yeah, you kind of have like the guy like right there, you know. Yeah, just, like you just sitting I'm not, there. <laughs> I'm not saying like you can't get a replacement from Mario, but it's just that you know, like he has been doing the voice of Mario for like so long that I just. I don't know. Yeah, like you kind of associate him with that. It's kind of like a uh, Mark Hamill with the Joker, you know. Yeah. Yeah, because you know Mark Hamill is also known for being Luke in Star Wars. He's you also know him for playing the Joker for like so many years, and like how his voice of the Joker is like pretty pretty damn uh, distinct. Yep. Yeah, that, that just seems very weird to me. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I just hope... 
I just hope they make it well. That's what yeah. I'm hoping for. Because yeah, I, I don't I, want... I, I... Oh, sorry. Because uh, I was going to say, I don't want another... I don't think it's going to be as bad as the Mario Brothers live-action movie from 93. But I don't think it's going to be good either. Oh, yeah, they, they won't have script changes like every week. So... Yeah. Uh, it, it, it at least... I mean, let's hope it'll at least be better than that. Alright? Yeah, let's 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 hope. I mean, you can't get as bad as the Mario Brothers movie. Yeah, that that movie was just all over the fucking place. Yeah. Um, at least Detective Pikachu did good, and the Sonic movie's doing good. So maybe video game movies are uh, making a comeback. Yeah, maybe because uh, they're actually good. Oh yeah, and they um they didn't they just recently release a Mortal Kombat film? I haven't watched it. Oh yeah, they uh I haven't watched that either, but they did. Um, yeah, so yeah, video game movies are becoming a thing now, so that's that's yeah. pretty interesting. Yeah, it's like it's like people actually like them because you know they're actually you know decent. Yeah, because for a while, like video game movies, I yeah they. They weren't good. Like, I mean, look at the Super Mario Brothers movie. Yeah, like, it, it was quite clear that they were just, like, you know, kind of cashing in, but also just yeah, kind of saying, they, fuck it. Yeah. How sad is it that in the past 10 years, the best things to come out of the Sonic franchise have been the Sonic Boom TV show and the Sonic movie? Yeah, it's... Like, like those are the only two things out of the Sonic. It's like, it's like when you look at it, Sonic, it's kind of dead. Yeah, man. You know, I feel so bad. Like it, it's been, it's been three, almost four years since Sonic Forces came out. So I don't know what they're doing with Sonic now. And they're supposed, to, they're, I, they're, they're working on a new Netflix show called Sonic Prime. So I don't know how that's gonna do. Yeah, like. Like, when you only got, like, those two things after, like, ten years, they're, like, the only yeah. two, like, good things as well. Yeah, I saw a video that was arguing that Sonic is better as a cartoon character than a video game character, and honestly, looking at it, I kind of agree. Yeah, I could, like, like, early on, just, like, you know, like, a 2D side-scrolling platformer. Yeah. It was pretty good, but... Nowadays, I, I, I can see. I can see that. Because the whole Sonic yeah. Boom cartoon was a lot better than the game. <laughs> and, Definitely. And, uh, yeah, it, it seems like they're going to probably put him into the realm of cartoons. Yeah, I'm not saying that they should stop making Sonic video games, but, like, but like the thing about Sonic is that, like, his design and his origin was... Like, his design was based off of classic cartoons like Felix the Cat and Mickey Mouse. Yeah, and this was, like, way back in the fucking 80s. <laughs> when, um, <laughs> yeah, 80, 80, late 80s, 90s, back when Sega used to make consoles before they, uh, stopped because, uh, I think they kept going on a losing streak. Well, yeah, they just kept, um, they were trying to keep the Sega Genesis alive by adding, by putting add-ons, and then yeah, when they finally decided they to put make the a thing on life support. Yeah, and when, when they finally decided to make a new console, which was the, um, I don't know, the Saturn, it was like, um, if that was at the time PlayStation was announced, and yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, like, by the, by the time, like, the 2000s came around they they were just they they stopped they stopped being console uh yeah <sighs> Drink some water yeah i don't yeah so i mean i mean i hope sonic the best in the future but i don't know yeah like never really heard much from him yeah, we haven't heard much from him. Like, um, what was the last, like, Sonic... Like, in terms of the mainline game, Sonic Forces, and in terms of um, 
console, I'd say, what was it, Team Sonic Racing? That was two years ago, almost two years ago. Yeah, like, like nothing like big. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't know what's going on at Sega. I don't know what's happened with the blue blur, because um, this year is supposed to be his, what, 30, 35th anniversary? Um, 30th, 40th anniversary? Yeah, let me, my, let me see. yeah, my best guess is that they're either putting them off to the side for now, or they're preparing something big. Yeah, let me see. 2020. Yeah, this year is its 30th anniversary, so you think that they prepare something big, right? Although, yeah. honestly, Sonic's anniversaries haven't gone so well ever since, you know, that one game. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. Well, actually, two games that was released that year. There was Sonic 06 <laughs> and Sonic Genesis on the Game Boy Advance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. La, 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 yeah, la, 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 that was a dark year for Sonic. Yeah, that, that yeah that was that was a really bad year. That was the year that tarnished Sonic's reputation. Uh, that, that was the year that he really became a meme. Yep, exactly. I I don't know, man. Yeah, I'm I, hoping. Oh, sorry. No, I'm just saying. I'm uh, hoping Sonic the best. I'm hoping. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I do hope that they have something in the pipeline. So I mean, they mu they must have, they must, because I mean, I d I don't know. They they finally, I mean, when they were working on Sonic Forces, they were making a new engine for Sonic, and that was the result. And Sonic Forces was pretty mediocre. I think maybe now they'll finally realize the engine's full potential and finally put it to good yeah. use. Yeah, maybe they've been like you know tweaky and messing with it and trying to like you know actually bring people back into Sonic. Well, yeah, l l that's what I hope. Hopefully, they're what they're doing. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's uh, really it. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a uh, one other thing that uh, I want to talk about real quick uh, about Friday Night Funkin'. So, what about it? I don't know if you heard, but there was a controversy going around not too long ago at the time of recording. Ooh. Okay, so have you heard of the Versus Sky mod? Uh, no, I have not. Please explain it to me. Okay, so Versus Sky was a mod for Final Fantasy Funkin where basically a boyfriend, fangirl, uh, project. basically. Project, upload their consciousness into the game so they could be with the boyfriend forever. But since the boyfriend has, you know, the girlfriend, and they're kind of, you know, in a relationship and all that, the fan girl gets uh, kind of pissed. And uh -huh. she gets so pissed that, um, she, uh, manip tries to manipulate reality in order to be with the boyfriend. But, uh, either then there's like two endings that you could get. Depending on if uh, you do the good or if you suck. Where oh, you okay, so... <laughs> yeah. It's like, um... What's that game called? Like, Doki Doki Literature Club? <laughs> yeah, it's a little like that. It's supposed to riff on, um... Self-inserts. And edgy OCs. I think. Uh, uh, makes sense. But, uh, yeah. So that that's uh, basically the plot synopsis of that. Uh... I was going to say you could download it, but you can't, and I'll explain shortly why. So, not too long ago, the thing, the mod, on uh, the side Game Banana, he was taken down. Saying that it was trash. And other there was a note that said, I ruined her life. What does that mean? Wow. <laughs> well, basically, the creator of the mod, BB Panzu, created the mod after he saw a fan account... For uh, the boyfriend, uh, called BS Rights Forever, where um, uh -huh. Sky was this person's. I think it was a her. It was this person's um, kind of OC for Friday Night Funkin', and he was uh, inspired to make a mod about it in order to like you know poke fun at self inserts and all that. But the the main thing was is that. 
since uh, the person who made the OC stated that she was 14, he automatically ass assumed that, oh, like, hey, this must be, like, a minor. So when the um, watch came out, the he wrote that the character was actually 12 going 13. But as it turns out, he didn't look through it hard enough because the creator stated that the OC's age was 19. And so oh, no. there was a big fucking confusion once people drew porn of the OC. Because you had the creator that stated that the character was 19, but yet the person who made the mod that stated that she was 12 going with 13. So there was a bit of an issue as to who to believe. Wow. Yeah. So it got to the point where people started to send death threats. Um, um, I'm trying to remember what else happened. Oh God. Uh, oh yeah, the porn that I mentioned. L lots of lots of porn happened after that. Oh no. And yeah, it got to the point though where BB Panzu decided to just say, "Fuck it, I'm gonna get rid of this mod." Because after he learned about the whole death threats thing, he uh, decided that uh, he decided to get rid of it and put the whole I ruined her life thing on it. Yeah, he put the I ruined her life and it says like the mod is like gone. Yeah. And uh, he also, yeah, I, I just think. It up oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was on the uh, game banana site, if I remember correctly. Like, like, the only way you can see the mod now is YouTube videos. Or if you already had it downloaded. Yeah, hopefully people preserve that and they're just going to like spread it around on like yeah. sketchy forums. <laughs> yeah, pe people are going to do it. Even though he said that he didn't want people to re-upload it, s s the people are going to do it. Like, like, yeah, they don't... Do it. like once, once something's on the internet, it's going to be there. Yeah, which is why I was like, when we said, oh, don't, don't re-upload I was like, well, someone's going to do it. Like, 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 whether they saw your message or not, someone's going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, someone's going to keep circulating them tapes. So, uh, yeah, that's the whole versus Sky controversy. Wow. Yeah, so it basically stemmed from uh, miscommunication involving age. Because Isn't that like every controversy on the internet now? It's just misinformation. Yeah. Yeah, specifically if whether the character was like 12 going 13 or 19. But like, not just like age, just like anything. Like whether it's like stating, s stating some fact even though you don't know it or like Stating things about a movie or something, even though you never watched the movie, and like, it, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. There's a, a lot of like, uh, like assumptions about certain things. Without uh, yep. going in, they like really going in depth about it. like they just put like surface level stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, th th yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Th this whole controversy with the Sky Mod is, yeah, it's a, uh, uh, it's pretty big oof if I say so myself. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I just, uh, I just wonder if any other mods gonna have uh, this kind of problem as well. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, the way to see. Because if it happened once, it could probably happen again. It was... Probably not for, like, the same reason. Because the whole reason for this one was whether... Was basically, like, whether her age... Was, like, you know, if she was, like, you know, an adult or minor. Yeah. And uh, whether it was okay to draw point of that. Because, uh... Cause, uh, cause, you know that that's how the internet do. 
That's the internet. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason why Move 34 is a thing. <laughs> yep. Well, that see, was. See, on that uh, lovely note. <laughs> yep. Ugh. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, that's all I gotta say as well. Sorry for uh, not having podcasts for the last two weeks. Shit happens, you know. And uh, now that uh, everyone's here, uh, we'll eventually try to get everyone here. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of hoping. So we got like this big old conversations because like, it's really is uh, like uh, with Kennedy Gaming. And, um, some of the others we have, uh, on here, I think it'd be pretty cool if we could have them on, you know, have, like, little chats like these. Yep. So, uh, yeah, since, uh, that's about all it, I am the Mad Artist, with me is Roger Rabbit, and we'll, uh, see you next time. And, uh, See ya. Yeah, and uh, hopefully we can maintain the schedule of uh, maybe around once a week, depending on the. Uh, hopefully. Yeah, and uh, depending on um, uh, schedules and timing and all that. So, yeah, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Yeah.